So after the last video where we saw how the multi-sampler works and what it's used for, now it's time to create our own. So let's dive in and do that with some samples I have. So a multi-sampler, as we discussed, can sample multiple samples, which means we can record different notes and also different velocity hits. So what I have in front of me here are three different notes, each with three different velocity layers. So you can kind of think of it as like there's a single note and it has a soft, medium and loud volume. The characteristic of the sound changes a little bit. So by adding in these different velocity layers, we'll get more sort of close to what the original instrument actually sounded like. It's a synth sound, it's just a synth pad sound, so we're going to use that. And let's take a look at how we can add this in to a multi-sampler. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a software MIDI instrument and I'm going to use the multi-sampler. When we create that and add it in, the multi-sample window will now look a little bit like this, where it's pretty much completely empty and ready to go. We can turn on our mapping and zone editors again, and we can look at adding these in. So first things first, we want to drag in some samples. And just like the quick sampler, we can do that by dragging in from the door. So I'm going to get rid of my library here, so I've got some more space to work with. And let's grab the first, well, let's grab the loudest ones first. So we're going to drag and drop those in. Now, as I drag these in and just drop them anywhere, I can drop them anywhere in this section, or if I bring it up to the top here, I can choose optimized or you know original, very similar to what we had when we were looking at the original quick sampler. So if I choose optimized, it's going to try and map keys based on the pitch, it's going to crop silence, it's going to find loop points and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and that could be quite useful, but otherwise you could go through the original method, which is just dumps things chromatically on the keyboard from C1 or C2 and up. When I hover over these, I do have the option of zone per file or zone per note and zone per file or split at silence. And this is basically meaning that if you have one big file with lots of notes, you might want to split at silence. But otherwise, we've got one file per note. So we've got a single note in each one of these regions. So we're just going to go zone per file and drop them there. As I let go, it analyzes those files and it drops them here. So I've got the first one here, which is my C2 key that we can see, and that's the zone that it's referencing there. The next one along, if I click this one, is the C3, and there's the zone, and the C4 as well. Now the root keys are currently set all over the place and they're clearly just dumped here at the bottom. So we need to move these. So the first thing we can do is just move these around. Now I can do this in a couple of ways. I can grab the region itself and just move it around. I can pick it up and drop it here on the C4 section. Just note that as you lift it up or drop it down, it will change things around. So you might not want to do that. So the other option is to use our keys down here. If I use the root key, for example, or the key to and key from, we can change the range of this key. So this is obviously going to be on C4, so I might just drag it to the C4 section just to be a little bit closer. But then I'm going to extend the range to C5. So that way any notes that are played up to that C5 key will be referencing that sample. We could also drag it down. We can even grab the actual zones and do that ourselves. So I might drag it down to about the G sharp there. What I'm then going to do is pick up this second one, drop that on the C3 there. And I'm going to drag that up to uh, G3 so it meets, and drag that down to G sharp 3 as well. So similar to the other one, it's spread over. And we'll do that to our final one here. And we will drag that out to C1 and up to G2. There we go. Now, the one thing that we need to make note of is if we've been dragging up and down, we might have regions that look like this, as I showed before. That's problematic because basically, if it's not spread over the whole thing, it means certain velocity ranges are not going to be triggering this sample. In this case right now, it means that anything that's in this velocity range, sort of like 100 velocity and up in a way, so the very loudest hits, they're not going to be captured by this sample. And this sample is not going to be played unless that zone is spread across the whole thing. So we can either drag the end here and just drag it all the way up, or come down to our velocity and make sure it goes from zero 
to 127. And we'll make sure that on each of those sample zones looks like it's all good, so no problems there. Now that we have them in there, they are in their own group, just a single group, dropped in the samples, and now we should be able to play something. So we have a really, really cool sound. Now the other thing that we need to do, because we didn't do any kind of optimization, is we might want to, on each one of these, look for some looping opportunities. And we can do that the same way as we did in the quick sampler with the auto loop. So I'm just kind of, kind of trust these. Hopefully it does a really good job. Uh, you know, it might be a bit dodgy, but it'll be okay for this example. So I'm just going to auto loop all of those. Then that way, if I hold down that chord again, we should hear it looping. So it sounds a little rough around the edges in some cases, but overall not too bad. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this group. I'm just going to call this one, uh, let's say, loud. And then that way we've got all of our samples in here ready to go. Now what I can do is I can reduce this sample range and bring in some more samples and put those in down here as well. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to drag the velocity range of these up because these are meant to be the loud samples. So maybe I might do say 90 to 127. Let's see how that feels. And then I can grab these samples that are here, the medium loud samples. And I'm just gonna drag and drop them in. And the great thing is that Logic's kind of picking up, oh, well, you probably want something to fill that a gap. So I'm just gonna spread it out, put it in there, set the root key to the same thing. It's absolutely wonderful. Great automation there makes things so much faster. So we can just drag and drop all of those in, references everything. We can go through and do the same order looping uh, to keep everything nice and consistent. We can do one final move as well. So maybe we'll drag this up to about, say, 50. And then we're going to drag in these soft ones. So we're going to do exactly the same thing, drag all of them in, and then we have a much more expressive instrument. So I'm just going to auto loop those as well. And now if I play the instrument or any kind of note on the instrument, it might trigger different levels. So therefore triggering different samples and different samples as I move up and down in pitch. cool feature to make it so much more expressive and so much more interesting. Really fantastic. Now when I select these zones, we do have a lot of controls down here and around here that create customization options in a way. And we can really fine tune the way that the instrument responds. For example, if this sample was just a bit too loud compared to the other two at the top end here, we could adjust the volume. If it was a little bit off center, we could adjust the panning. So then we can bring a level of consistency between all of our samples. Down here, we can get really precise with sample start, end times, the looping modes. And we've got all of our modes, like we can turn off the loop, we can turn it to reverse and alternate like we did in the quick sampler. We can even change this to a one shot or reverse the sample. So if you've got a drum library and you want to play it on a MIDI piano-like keyboard controller, then you could build your drum library here inside this and still use one shots. So there's a lot of really good useful controls to make each of these zones and sa samples work for you within your sample library. And if you want to control any of these particular zones in a lot more detail or see an overview of all of them, we have something over here called a zone list menu. And when we click on that, it shows it in a lot more sort of like clinical detail, if you like. Uh, if you're used to spreadsheets, this is going to probably be a better way to do it. So I could select this particular zone that I'm on, for example. If I scroll over, I could do things like reverse the sample. I could turn off the loop if I didn't want it on that one. I could change the start and end time. I could do all sorts of things from within this list. So particularly good 
if you need to go through and do a lot of changes to the same thing, maybe change every zone's tuning, you might want to go through and do it on the list because it's a little bit easier. You can select this one and hit this icon here and it will give you the sound itself. And then you could go and do your fine tuning, for example. So this could be a very powerful place, particularly if you need to do a lot of edits to a lot of different zones. So that's our first sample instrument inside the multi-sampler, creating a really expressive pad by taking advantage of things like spreading out the different velocity ranges and spreading out the different pitches with different samples. All of this goes towards making a much more expressive, intricate and detailed sample library. So it's a really useful thing if you want a lot of clarity and detail. We're obviously got to explore a lot more controls inside this thing. There's a lot more that it can do. So I hope to see you in the next video.